Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us on another edition of Season 2 of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. It's been roughly about a month since we've done an episode, but we're finally back here again. It's that time of year. Finally! Oh. Um, <laughs> the time of year is here! I wish I had a jingle bell sound effect just to mess with him a little bit more. Is he still bothered that we interrupt? Anyway. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yes, we are back here on a podcast where we will not stop until our voices are heard, our needs are met. Because ladies and gentlemen, we have a dream. I've been saying it all this time. And I will not stop until it is met and until my voice is heard. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I will not stop until hashtag push Cesaro. Continue. I, I almost cut him off with a Bill Clinton reference. You should have. I, I, I missed the window, but it's okay. A lot of people missed the window, apparently. We'll jump out of it if you have a chance. Wow. That's very... That's aggressive. You know dark. why? Because that way I won't be cut off next time. Where's the fun in that? You jumping out of a window? Wow, somebody's moody today. Wow. Anyway, let's let's jump. Speaking of jump, <laughs> hey, do you get it? Because like we were, you could jump out. Let's oh. jump right oh. in. So, uh, did you preface anything about what today's episode actually is? I did not. All I right. was about to, but I was cut off twice. Um, cut offs and jumping and. Jumping and cutoffs and yeah, much like and... Cesaro's push. Yeah, if you don't get to the point, something else is gonna get cut off. Go get it. Um, we are doing the 2019 Slammy Awards AWP edition. We have uh, wrote, written up 15 topics here that we're gonna pick out randomly. Each person has written down five things. We're only gonna choose ten. And we're going to have nominations, and then at the very end, we're going to choose a winner. These things could vary from match of the year, superstar of the year, what have you. So, gentlemen, should we get started? Yeah. Well, before we start, we... Here we go. What? You didn't even introduce us. No one even knows who the hell we are. Oh, people Everyone know knows exactly who, you who you are. are. We're 92 episodes, and I think people know who you are. Don't you know who I am? He's the commish. He's Dan the man. There you go. I mean, I'm I'm not the commish, but I'm, close and enough. I'm not damn the man. So, oh really? Oh, I think I've gone cross. I get it. His one pop culture reference. Oh, I've had more. Since you haven't caught them. Hashtag push Cesaro. Not a pop culture reference. That's Cesaro hashtag. is pop culture. He's from Switzerland. Speaks five languages. He's international the, the superstar. Popest. Thank you. The popest of cultures. Except, and he gets a pop too every time he comes out. All right, well, I'm going to go first. I guess. Uh, uh, all right, so. What's happening? I don't know, but you know what shouldn't have happened? The worst storyline of 2019. Oh, oh, I got that already. This, this is my topic. The floor, the floor is open for nominations. How, okay, so we're first nominating, right? Okay. Um, Are we just doing one each and then picking yeah. three? Yeah. Is that? Okay. Well, I mean, um, we can't pick four or five storylines, then that'd be the entire year. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Ouch. Yes, that's how you've made me feel this year, WWE. Who, which order are we yeah, going? Well, in? You seemed super excited. I figured you were going to start. Lana Rusev, oh. Bobby Lashley. Oh, that's my nomination. Yeah, I don't even know if we have to come up with anything else. Um, let's see. Um, I I'm a jump in. Um, the whole superhero Ali thing. When Was they that? try to foreshadow him as like this like avenging Dark Knight type thing where he would like have these weird promos going. <laughs> the inspirational ones? Yeah, that made him seem like a superhero though, and it's like uh I gotta be what? honest. I enjoyed those. Those seem like they weren't scripted. No, you know, they seem like I could read those out of a like comic book though. Well it was much more interesting than a generic baby face promo. I don't know. But, okay, if that's yours. That's mine. Dan? Um, man, it's been a weird year. Yeah, I was telling I Kamish. Like, I'm struggling to remember what happened exactly. last year and what happened this year. Um, Not much happened last year. Trying to come up with something. Um, hmm. <sighs> I don't know, Lacey and Natty. 
It was just a feud. Very well. It wasn't really a storyline. Well, it was kind of start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Yeah. So. And that's just, it's just generically misfiring. But of the selections, I think we're all unanimous on uh, the Rusev. Cousin Lana. Rusev and Cousin Anal. And Bobby. Wow. Bobby. Wow. You can't associate those two together anymore. It doesn't make sense anymore. I was cleansing my throat. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense about. anymore. I don't know what They're you're not together. About. Anyway, yeah, bad. It's a bad storyline. Yeah. Um, so we're the on the worst same page. Storyline of 2019. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind the, the fact that they're turning Rusev face, but. You could have still turned him face it's a, and, and not involved this story at yeah, all. It's a stupid storyline. Um. I feel like I've seen this before. I hate to say it, but if it was in the Attitude Era, it would have been much more properly handled. Yeah. Like, there would have been a betrayal from Lana, and then they would have, like, really gone down that path. But this one, it was like... Literally out of nowhere. Literally out of nowhere. And I think... More out of nowhere than an RKO. I hate to get it. Um, I literally think they were trying their hardest to, like, one-up the... the badness in it, like how can we make it much more worse than it is? Oh, we'll have Lana file a restraining order. Oh, we'll have a divorce, you know, uh, segment the next week. Lana just happens to keep losing her accent more and more every week, except when she says Rusev. Like, uh, oh my god, <laughs> my name is Lana, and it's I'm married to Rusev. Rusev. Like, do do you see the horribleness so in that? Cringe. All so, right. so that's congratulations, Bobby Boy, my cousin, Lana. My cousins will be so proud. And Rusev, um, you have earned yourselves a very warm place in our hearts. Your uh, your trophy is in the mail. Expect it in uh, three to five eternities. FedEx delivery. I'll pick. <laughs> the best tag team of the year, either official or two people put together. So this is mine. So when you say two people put together, like actual... Like, like two people who were just slapped together. That made sense? Yeah, if, if that's what you think. I mean... Because we slapped a lot of people together, and it made no fucking sense. <laughs> Hell, look at our last nomination and winners. <laughs> God, come up with better stories next year. <laughs> not happening. Um, XFL is coming. Oh, so that's not going to work either. Yeah. Um, I'll throw... I'm trying to think. I have one in my mind, but I'm trying to think. Can we have more than one nomination or just one? You can have, like, like two. Okay. I don't want to get out of hand. Um, I'll say... I'll say Bliss and Cross. That's what I was going to say. That was mine. Um... If we're saying a tag team that is already, like, had been a cohesive right. unit yeah. that wasn't slapped together, I would nominate the Street Profits. Okay. Just because their success in NXT and how they successfully transitioned to Raw, yeah. and they're winning over the crowd. And if you give them like a good five years, maybe three to five, they will be one of the greatest tag teams of this current generation. Yeah. Um, I I mean I guess we're mixing an NXT while we're at it. Uh, I was gonna say Undisputed Era. I was also um, considering the just the tag team or all four. I'll say O'Reilly and Fish, because okay. those guys having a tag team match is, like, you know, so... It's hard. Now, yeah. now, I'll argue that by removing the other two, that actually devalues them a little bit. Yeah. Because I think as a unit, they're, they've, been, they've been more effective and more, uh, more useful than those right. two have been as a standalone. Right. Um, like, they seem like... The to appear as the weak links of the team, but when it's all four together, it's just dominance all throughout. And I mean, because you're sharing your spotlight with the other person, like Roderick Strong and Adam Cole, they're they have single titles, so they kind of get that opportunity Wait, to I'm be sorry, alone. Who? Adam Cole, baby, boom, hashtag fix WWE 2K20. Um. <laughs> Um, what, you're not enjoying it? Um, there's a lot of things that are a mess this year. <laughs> and especially in the virtual world. Um, shall we pick our... Well, did you have another? You said you had no, two. No, it was Bliss oh, and Cross, okay. and it was uh, Undisputed Era. 
Um, well, if we're picking amongst the three, then it has to stick to tag team because we we're, we're not you're not really selling um, undisputed era as a, just a tag team, right? Yeah. I w- my thing with Bliss and Cross, honestly, we were well. You were expecting an eventual heel turn for which Bliss we still again. might get, which we still might get. But is Nikki injured right now? No, Bliss was, but she just oh, came okay. back. Yeah, so now now is the time. Um, I'll 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 sign on for Street Profits for this one. I'm gonna honestly say Bliss and Cross because the women's tag team championships were irrelevant until those two held them, and they seem like they like. They're 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 a good, a good pairing. Right. I, I, I do and I do enjoy uh, the two of them. I would there. say okay. Well, we can split the award because technically you did write in there, meshed in. Too. Yeah. So you could give it to both. So the established team and the patchwork. Yeah. All right. All right. Congrats to the Street Profits and congrats to Bliss Cross on your twenty nineteen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Three to five decades. Lexi. Uh, here we go. What, Most what, what if in 30 to 50 years they actually, like, oh, they go to leave their homes and they open it and we've just left a box on their, their doorstep with a trophy inside? Like, what the hell is this? <laughs> they, they have no idea. Go on. Most likely to be fired or quit. Is this... Who wrote this? This is you? Not. That's Dan. Are we, like, that we thought would be fired in 2019 or is going to be fired? Uh, uh, I would say post-2019. Post-2019. Okay. So I was going to say, recently we had the release of Harper, Sin Cara, and The Ascension. Yeah. So. Oh. And if we don't see you on AEW, we'll, we'll see you. Thank God. So based on things that we've seen or haven't seen or heard or have read or listened to on other forms of podcasts and telecommunications yeah. throughout 2019 who is uh shaping up to be uh that hot free agent that and, and we'll exclude the ones who just got killed. so i'm gonna eliminate the ones that we know are not going anywhere uh randy orton is one <laughs> since he just signed a five-year extension aj signed his extension a few months back mm-hmm and those Long. are all candidates that we thought, oh, they want to leave or they're not getting story or whatever. Yeah. Lana, I'm, elim- I'm eliminating them. Yeah. Lana also signed an extension. Um, I put... Um, so I, I, I did put down five names since there's a lot of super okay. to consider yeah. for this. Because okay. I just grabbed a couple things. So, Carrillo or Carrillo. Um, Umberto. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Since he's like a fresh face, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, Braun Strowman, really? Uh, Rowan, because if we just saw, I thought of Harper that. Lee, yeah, yeah. Um, I put Cesaro on here, and Sami Zayn. Oh my God! Ooh. I'm saving Sami Zayn for a different thing, but if I had to, I would put Sami Zayn as one of my top two of quitting. Yeah. Well, quit fire. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm putting both of those together. Okay. So just, this is so, sort of a, a... So I would say Sami Zayn, just because honestly, this whole year, we were expecting a good return. We were expecting a push. We were... There was a lot of hope for Sami Zayn. And we got what is by far the most ridiculous of momentum shifts in his direction with story, with character... With whatever the hell he was doing this year. Hell, he even mentioned AW on TV. Uh. Um, and that's a big no-no to say that. Uh, uh, uh. Nobody cares. Um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm gonna go with Umberto. I'm gonna pick really? him. Really? Why Umberto? I just I just don't know how much longevity he's got. So I could see him being like a, a pet project that fails. He may not get released necessarily. They might bump him down to NXT, <clears throat> but... So here's one, one more, and I'll let you put yours in. Uh, Ruby Wright. Mm-hmm. I saw something where it said she's apparently going to make a comeback in 2020. Yeah, but like, this should have been her year. Well, I've 
been expecting this Liv Morgan thing to like pan out sometime this year, and so far it's been like, no, you're saying stuff. Shh. Well, apparently it's soon because I guess there was, uh, a, there was promo. a promo video, yeah. But it's uh, what Liv Morgan makeover. Someone wrote, "I hope it's not an Emmalina deal," which I hope it's not. Someone made a freaking meme where it's like the Emmalina Liv Morgan makeover. Jesus. Cross-referencing with the office, it's the same picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, who are yours? Like, quit fire. Honestly, fire like, quit. it's as weird as it sounds. I can't even think of any. Really? Because there's so many people on the that roster. That have already quit? That have already quit or just... Well, okay. So if you can't think of any, I want to ask him this. Okay. Why did you put Braun on there? Um... I, th- I think the the reason I put him on there... And, I, I and don't under totally... what section? Uh, quit. Okay. Uh, so the reason that I, I, I don't totally buy into it, but I, I breezed past a clickbait article that talked about um, Braun Strowman's plans for Royal Rumble or something, or TLC, uh, getting start-stopped again, where they were like, oh, well, we'll do this thing. I, you know, never mind, we're not going to do this thing. Yeah. And I, I, there, there's a part of me that feels like he might get tired of getting the, the runaround. Yeah. Because it's like, oh yeah, we're going to push you to the moon. We're going to give you the universal cha- Oh, ne- We're not going to give you the universal championship. We're going we're gonna to put you over here. We'll have you feud with AJ Styles for, for a minute. And, and then maybe we'll, we're, we're not going to put you back in the world title picture. We got other people right now. Wait, 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 wait. You're doing this now? Uh, let's put you back in the world uh, title championship conversation. Wait, no, 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 no. Universal, that's more your law. That's what constantly goes around with him. Yeah, it's like they can't make up their goddamn mind. And I always thought with Braun, it was in quitting more like getting fired because he has shown in the past year, apparently according to like articles and stuff, that he does have a tendency to not really go along with like what he's being told to do backstage. Yeah. He doesn't arrive on time sometimes. Yeah, and, and it could I mean, be due to frustration. Yeah, and I was that's what I was gonna say is it not to not to advocate for that, but. Yeah, if you if you are going if you're going to work, and your boss your boss is constantly like, "Hey, I got night I got plans for you. I got plans." Anyway, as I was saying to you over here, and he, they never come back to you, then you're gonna be like, "Why am I here, Dan? Why? Why am I even here?" And so you're sitting there just kind of shrugging your shoulders, going, "Look, dude, if you're gonna keep." Hanging the carrot, dangling the carrot in front of me, I'll fucking rip it down and take it somewhere else. I I don't care. Yeah. So that's the, that's the reason I put him on the list. I don't to, I don't totally buy into it because I think that I think he's probably content with being in WWE or getting that that WWE monies. Mm. But uh, I don't know. All right. So we said Umberto and who else? Sammy. Sammy. Yeah. You didn't. Choose one. If 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 I'm gonna be sarcastic, well, he, he, I mean, okay, Kane okay. Velasquez and uh, Tyson Fury. I don't. I One of them's getting a title shot at WrestleMania. Annoying. All right. You know, I wish I could enter the WWE as like a prominent athlete and somewhere else and be promised a championship title. Yeah, yeah, that's all stupid. Anyway, um, I'll go with Zayn. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna I, say Zayn. Yeah. So, congratulations, Sami Zayn, for being the most likely person to quit. <laughs> We're so sorry you're not getting what you deserve. Isn't it Dan? Uh, I mean, who picked the last one? He did that. I did. Oh, okay. My bad. Okay. I said I'm sorry. It's fine. Okay. Wow. Anyway, I'm sorry. I, well, I picked mine. Uh, most improved overall. So, oh, who this is easy. from the beginning of 19 to now has shown the most growth? Was this mine? That was mine. Okay, because I think I wrote one, which is probably I, the same yeah, thing. I, but... think, I think you might have had something kind of similar. Yeah. But... Um, how, how was it phrased? Most improved overall, so male or female. I think this one is uh, unanimous. Bray Wyatt. Yeah? Think about how the guy's name was not even in the conversation to where he is now. Like, the guy has literally... T- like there was a point right before the Universal Championship where he had taken over the show. R- the raw signature would hit, you would see The Fiend. 
as it was ending, you would see the fiend. And there would be this small, like, like light flickering, oh, cause that's the fiend. The guy had, at one point had taken over the entire show. So I'm going to go with Bray. I would choose Bray as well just because of the fact that at one point, that's all you were talking about. You, you would even wonder on SmackDown, oh, what's going to happen? I want to see him come back. I want to watch Raw just for Bray. Like, yeah. There wouldn't be anyone else that would hold that conversation. Maybe Sasha Banks just because of the fact that she finally decided to come back after Mania. But Bray, literally, it's like, oh. His segment's coming. I want to see how crazy it is. Yeah, oh, yeah. he's finally wrestling again. Oh, he's finally, like, controlling everything he does. There wasn't a moment where you didn't think Bray Wyatt yeah. all of this past year. Um, I'll probably just settle on Bray also because I think I think that is the most obvious answer. But I'll also throw in, uh, throw in the OC. Just okay. as an as an honorable 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 mention, um, and Rowan because he went from being uh, Rowan to, to Eric Rowan to, to being Eric Rowan, <laughs> um, and then I'll also throw out uh, Lacey. Yeah, because she I don't think yeah. she's near anywhere near Bray's level of of, of tra- course of, of ring wise I would say she's improving. Yeah. yeah, verbally she's still struggling a little bit. But I think that uh, I, th- I I was advocating for it there for a minute. I I think this face turn is gonna help her. Yeah. Uh, so good on her. But yep, sounds like uh, Bray. The fiend, Bray. Yeah, Bray. Yeah. Bray Wyatt slash the fiend. Um, you guys can have two different looking trophies. I don't care. But congratulations on being the most improved of 2019. And we will definitely let you in. And this is a friendship that will never, ever end. So the following topic is... Brought to you by the NWO. Congratulations, by the way, going into the Hall of Fame. And for your double nominations, on apparently it's just the main four. No I was shocked. I thought it would be a Hall, Nash, and Hogan. Because when you think NWO, you kind of... Bless you, X-Pac, but you kind of only think of those three, don't you? Well, he was held back from joining the NWO because during the time... His WWE contract was hard to like. Mm. But also, speaking of the Hall of Fame... Yeah! Oh, congratulations, Batista. Bautista. Dave Batista. Blue Batista. Blue Batista. Drax. Shorts. All right. Hashtag. What does he want? Push Dana Brooke. What he really, really wants. What does he want? Just give him what he wants. What does he want? What he really, really wants. He wants to. He wanna. He wanna. He. You he know the hall of fame. He wants a zig zig title shot. He just. This can go on forever. <laughs> anyway. A new nose ring. <laughs> Ooh, as fake as it was, but still. Maybe another. Face Imagine if it actually facelift. was done. Did you just use the f word? Facelift. Continue. <laughs> Uh, this is your topic. Okay. Most successful superstar in 2019. So we're saying that's... from last year to... Well, that's improved. So that's from beginning to end uh, growth as opposed to this, which is just who had the best year. Two nominees in, in, in come to mind for me. One come in mind for me. One is the man. Because okay. honestly, in, if it's the women's division... She was the talk the right. whole year. Not just, oh, we stopped talking about her. Oh, her name comes back. No, it's literally from January to now. Yeah. Men's Seth. Seth Rollins, the whole year. Like, there wasn't a moment that he wasn't a champion. There wasn't a moment where he wasn't talked about. There wasn't a moment where he wasn't a main event. Yeah. That Those are my two nominations. What's your one? My one that I think of, I just feel like if it was had a little bit more better, would have maybe been like would have scratched the amount of talk that Becky gets is Bailey. Yeah. Because Money in the Bank winner. I I mean, hold on, hold on, give me a second because we're talking about successful, which means accolades. Held the tag team championship this year, won Money in the Bank, cashed in, won the championship, and had a heel turn. Something that we had been waiting for for a long time. I just feel like if it was handled better, like I said, conversation would have been a bit different. So. That's the thing. That, that, that When you say handled better, you mean the heel turn. 
the heel turn, yeah, and some of the face turn. Because when she became champion, it's like, okay, you're champion, but... Yeah. Uh, I'll throw out Brock. Because mostly this latter half. So the, my, my argument here is, so he comes, he comes in after, after losing to Seth. He comes in. He F5s Kofi Kingston, ending the, the fairy tale. And then... In six seconds, by the way. Then, then he picks up the win over Kane via the Kimura lock. Loved it. And then he beats Rey Mysterio uh, after being hit with a PVC, I mean, steel pipe. And uh, suplexes and F5s a child multiple times. I don't know. It just seems like a good year for Brock Lesnar. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Everyone was happy when he showed up at Money in the Bank. I wasn't. Why are you not happy? Are, are you really asking me that? Yes. Um, he just lost the title and then he was going to get it back again? But he didn't get... Well, okay, look. Without him getting that, we wouldn't have gotten the best rematch between Seth and Brock that we got. We got something that was made up for in SummerSlam that was horribly bad at WrestleMania. Let's be honest. That match... For the three minutes that it lasted inside and the 20 minutes it lasted outside before it started mm. was the worst opening to WrestleMania, in my honest opinion. But their match at SummerSlam, best thing I've yeah. ever seen Seth and Brock do. And also, if we're talking about success, I mean, Lesnar <clears throat> got out of Saudi Arabia before everybody else, so that... that that's a win in my book. Win. <laughs> God, that is horrible. <laughs> and the Prince does recognize he's still alive. <laughs> All right, so um, unbelievable, Brock. That's my my mine's, nomination. What mine's was Seth. Mine's Bailey. Um, one so. has to be decided. Um, if you can put those three, yeah, of those three, I Bailey's at the bottom for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Brock. Who was yours? Seth. Now the reason I'm the reason I'm going against Seth is the way he's ending the year because he's been kind of. It's like he's was the he's heel turn recently. disappointing to you? I think it's I think it's been it was poor, poorly executed. Handled? It's like he comes out after Survivor Series, he's running everybody down. You're like, why? Dan, why? 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 I would have much rather had like after Survivor Series, you don't see Seth. Silence. AOP attacks Kevin Owens repeatedly. Who's behind this? And then last week when they had the the, the chair turn. All of a sudden, Seth turns around and... Yeah, but it was very... Yeah, it it was... But I think it's because it was done too quick. If it had been done at the beginning of January, it would have made more sense. Because you could have built more around it. You could have made Seth look still like, oh, it wasn't me. I I have no sense. I think it would have been been better executed if you had kept the two things separate there for a minute even. Like, you could have... um, Seth running his story, you could have the AOP jumping Kevin Owens thing, and you're just kind of throwing like fuel on the fire from a distance. Yeah. And then ultimately the plot twist is wait, Seth is the guy in right. charge of AOP. I don't know. I just I don't think it was done well. I just hope we don't get a Shield 2.0 deal. I don't think it's looking like that. I think it's well because remember what AOP used to wear for their ring gear. So I think it was someone's bright idea. Hey, they're kind of wearing Shield gear, so. Psst. Mm. I don't know. All right, so maybe, all right. I saw how that worked with Drake Maverick. So, so if we're to put the order, it'd be Bailey, then Seth, and fine, I'll I'll coincide with yours to put Brock of those three. I think Seth had Seth had a much more successful year from like mid twenty eighteen to now. But if we're just talking twenty nineteen, then it's it's probably gonna be Brock. I guess. Ah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, his name is Paul Heyman, and he has been given the honor of giving the uh, trophy to the reigning, defending <clears throat> world champion, Brock. <laughs> wow, even when he coughed to try to cleanse himself before saying it. It's it hard. Work. How does Paul, he- Paul uh-huh. Heyman do it? Like, I just don't. God, you, Brock Lesnar, congrats, man. I don't know. He's got probably got the eye of the Jew. Um, 
Beer Fest? Yes. <laughs> Is it you? Uh, I picked it. Uh, it's, your it's, your it's your turn. Number six. Who's Slammy the sixth Award man? number six. Who is the sixth man? Best face slash heel turn of 2019. Is that mine? When is it? Oh, that is mine. So, when I wrote this, I think, like, okay, who's come back that we've seen, like, oh, yeah, you know, you're finally back, thank God. Sasha? Oh, you turned heel. I like it. Oh, you turned face. You suck. Yeah. Or vice versa. Um... I had I, I had a similar I have a similar one in the pile too and it was most intriguing. Okay. Uh turn and that was okay. fa- face or or heel. heel. Um is it, was this face face slash heel? Yours? Yeah. yeah. Um, it could go either way. It doesn't matter. I I would say Well, which ones were there? I just there was Kevin Sasha. Owens. There was Sasha, Kevin Sasha, Owens. Sasha, Kevin, Seth now, yeah. Daniel Bryan there at the end before he lost to The Fiend. Right. Um, Finn Balor. The Miz. The Miz. Uh, EO. Mm-hmm. We need was that narrow- this year? Yeah. I think so. Mm-hmm. That's what I was saying. Is my, t- my frame of time is a little jacked. Yeah. <laughs> no, EO's was this year. Um, Dakota Kai. Dakota. Oh, you need that's like eight right there. Yeah, you narrow it down to three. Um, D- Dakota's got to be in there. <laughs> okay, so that's yours. All right, the, that that's one of your three. One of mine is Kevin. Mine has the, one of my second is Sasha. Yeah, hers is in there. I'm gonna go with Finn. Okay, so how about we discuss Dakota, Finn, and Sasha? Okay. Okay. Sasha, because okay, the beginning of the year, her and Bailey team up again. We finally get the uh, Boston Hut connection going. They went. They're the first inaugural women's tag champs. Then obviously Sasha leaves. Everyone gets excited when she comes back after a five month hiatus. But she does a heel turn, takes off the wig, not blue haired. I don't know if they premeditated the fact that she's gonna be on SmackDown with that, and. As much as an other come out this year. What happened? I said, did the women's tag titles only come out this year? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Dan. And as much of an annoyance as she is, she has done what a proper heel does. Crowd turned on her. True heel antics, but still keeping true to the name of being a heel. In my, in my book, that that's why I would say Sasha does. Get top honors for this award. And she was protected until Hell in a Cell, which they had a great match. But I feel like after Hell in a Cell, it was like, it kind of dwindled down where it's like, yeah. Her story dwindled because at one point it's like, you can't have Becky and Sasha constantly going at it because. And I think she got hurt. If I'm and not we mistaken. put in the mix of NXT. Yeah, I think she, being, she was one of the people who got like, yeah. a concussion. Or we put NXT like in the mix of this whole Survivor Series yeah. fiasco. Uh, and right now, what she's instead of playing like a true heel, she's being a typical heel, being a lackey technically to, to Bailey, Bailey, which could lead to WrestleMania mm-hmm. with those two clashing. Maybe that's that's my I I would between the three I would pick her. Um, I'll make my case for Finn is because we had Finn earlier on in the year with the sort of what what is going on with him. Uh, was he gonna join the club? Was he da 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 da? Um, and then he went yeah, away. Yeah, singles run before he returned. Yeah, and th- and then he, he he was gone for for a hot second, and then he came back. And uh, I I'm I'm Finn Balor, and I'm NXT, and then that kicks kind of kicked it off. And you're like, oh, this is a different side of Finn that we're gonna see. And then you've seen that slow tease of. The Undisputed Era, is he a standalone, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. he's just kind of attacking everybody. Um, so, because the, the, this one was phrased as most most intriguing, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm curious to see where this goes into 2020 because of the fact that this is such a vastly different Finn Balor than I think we've seen in years. Yeah. But I'm wondering how soon is 
Keith Lee just going to destroy him. <laughs> That's fair. Especially with the greatest camera angle I've ever seen in a while. <laughs> Where, like, Finn's in the corner and just had another oh, one to yeah. see Keith Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Bask in his glory. Whoever had that camera shot, props to that camera guy. Seriously. Nailed it. Um, I was going to say, like, Dakota Kais for me, like, I knew it. <laughs> When like when Mia Yim got attacked and all that, I'm like, and when Rhea's like, sorry Dakota, but I'm gonna go with Tegan only. I'm like, okay, I I feel it. It's it's coming. But you didn't know that it was gonna happen mid match. Yeah. And the way she walks out of that cage and just, just pauses, turns, turns around and just goes and attacks her, and it was a brutal attack. And she put her hands on William Regal. That's something that you don't do. Yeah. Or don't do. Um. So. The fact that I kind of saw it coming was, like, it kind of, like, it doesn't really rank high up there. But Sasha's was like, oh, crap, she's back, you know? And then with the new hair and attacking Natty. So, mine's going to have to be Sasha. Uh, I just felt like I couldn't not make a case for Finn. But, yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably go with Sasha, too. <laughs> so, congratulations to the boss. Sasha Banks on your best, or is what is intriguing? Yeah. Intriguing. I'm the, being the most intriguing Face slash heel turn of 2019. And Michael Cole, do not say it's boss time. Please no, for the love Shut of God. Uh, who picked last? I did. Uh, Dan, so it's you. My turn, number mm. seven. Lucky number seven. <clears throat> Superstars you were hoping would be better booked, but were not. Hashtag push Cesaro. Okay, right. so I think that's his. <laughs> Do you want to make your case again? Well, no, but there is a second guy where I... There's Who's the second man? <laughs> it's Sami Zayn, because remember I told you guys in the build-up how he was booked to look like an absolute idiot when he saw Matt Riddle and Keith Lee come in like, Oh, NXT, no, I didn't, I'm just I'm going to go over here. And This guy goes from being the most popular babyface in the company, the pops that he was getting to being watered down and being irrelevant. Like Shinsuke Nakamura's manager. Like, okay, what do you want me to do oh, with that? Oh, he had a shoulder injury, yeah, but he's raging out during Shinsuke's intro. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, I mean, in regards to someone who we frequently saw, <laughs> Sami Zayn was, was, was the one where I'm like, okay, maybe he'll be better booked. Maybe he'll become like a, a t- top baby face, but... I think just crapped out all, all over that, didn't they? I would probably say Sammy as well, just because it, it, I was expecting a lot. I think I had him last year nominated as one of my best returns and hopefully getting some kind of success in a world title, but not even close. Um, I will counterpoint with Kofi Kingston. Really? Explain. So, superstars you hoped would be booked better. I don't think the title run was good. A lot of people didn't think. Um, like I think that up to like one, like it was it was great up until he won the belt, and then it was sort of like, okay, where do we go from here? And I don't know if this is Kofi's Kofi's fault, or if it was straight up a like bad booking, but you had sort of these lackluster feuds for the title all the way up until he just gets caught by an F5 and loses. And then he just fades back into obscurity. Granted, part of that, I'm sure, is because Xavier got hurt, so then they needed him to pop in and be the other tag Let's team member. Let's just give them the tag belts for the illustrious seventh time now. I was going to say, I think a big problem with that was Kofi Kingston wasn't the WWE Championship. The New Day's version of Kofi Kingston was the yeah. WWE Champion. Because I think the whole time we were saying, like, okay, Kofi, now that you've got the title, like, pop out of that shell now. Like, come on. like You need a character shift. Yes. But, yeah, it was also the fact that he still felt like he was being booked as part of the New Day. And yeah. Like, but he shouldn't be. If he had turned heel with the championship, I think it would have worked out a lot better. We probably would have gotten better booking. Yeah. Um, better matches. Like, cause... that Randy Orton feud, I think, was probably the only... S- Semi salvageable thing. It was going somewhere, kinda. And then we get what we get after SummerSlam. I was like, well, it was also that one had history, and I feel like they didn't exploit that history. Like they beat, like beat, they they beat a dead horse with that, with the promos and the package videos and the stupid. It's like, 
Okay, you Stupid. have some. <laughs> you have Stupid! I, I felt like you had something um, with it, you know, this tenure. Stupid! <laughs> I'm done. So, <laughs> yeah, my whole thing on, on Kofi, and I think I said it when he first won the belt, was, look, if you're, if you're going to book him as a part of the New Day, do something with that even. Because you could, it would have been, it would have been an interesting angle to where they, off the group, to man. where they Freebird ruled the the world title, and then one of the other members loses it, and then you can have Kofi turn heel and go, "What the hell, man? You lost me my title. You but lost you said our it was, title." But you said it was ours. No, it's mine. mine. Um, as much as you don't like him or you don't agree, I watched the After the Bell, or I, I watch, I listen to After the Bell podcast with Corey Graves, and he has said that. He's made a lot of interesting points lately. I, I, I agree, agree with that. the guy. I agree. And one thing that he said was, it's probably about damn time, and maybe Vince will jump on board because he likes the big sweaty guys. Big E. Like, I wouldn't mind if Kofi, okay, he was on this nice title run, and okay, everything is good. He's overcome everybody. Boom. Big E just, you know, demolishes the entire thing. Like, he rips into everything. Destroys the New Day. Destroys Kofi Kingston's hopes of, like, you know, still hanging out to that title. Yeah, you could even have turn like you turn him back essentially into Biggie Langston. Yeah, and you have him say something in the vein of, "Look, you guys are my family. You guys are my brothers, but I'm hungry. It's yeah. my time to eat." And then he, and then yeah, he, he yeah breaks him up at least in the meantime, because then you could have a thing down the road where Xavier and Kofi go, uh, "All right." <laughs> We understand. <laughs> and then they rekindle, and then everything's fine, but at least he gets a shot. But right. I think it, it, if, if that were to happen, I would still make Biggie be like, yeah, yeah, it still destroys him. Yeah. Like, I don't need you guys. <laughs> I don't need any of you. I have the belt. That's yeah. all I ever needed. Because um, so... I think there's been talk that he might get this eventual push, and that supposedly if he was on his own, in five years, he'd be one of the top guys. Because the guy could wrestle, like whether it's singles match or tag team match, the guy. The guy could had an Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, and that's like he's a former NXT World Champion. Yeah, exactly. How do you not trust the guy to be one of your main guys? They don't trust a lot of people, which I think is their problem. So who's our? We had oh, well. Kofi. We had Sammy. You. You yes. didn't say one. No, oh, I did. What was yours? Sammy. Oh, so we got. I'm still sticking with Sammy because at least Kofi got the title. At least he got a WrestleMania. Kofi got uh, made into the the man, but was not looking Becky like Lynch the was man. a part of that. You know, what? slapped a red wig on him. <laughs> but okay. Sammy really got the short end of the stick. And I mean, far I'll, as I'll, as I'll far as see. return booking promos, his promos were great, and then all of a sudden they started turning. He was literally losing every week. Well, sorry, Kofi, I tried, but congratulations to uh, the. Uh, does he have a, a nickname? No. To the 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 El Generico, s- the Sultan of Ska, uh, Sami Zayn. Let's Moving on, number eight. What was the eighth match? Just three more, three more topics. Uh, I think this is yours. Female. MVP. Yeah, so overall female M- M- MVP of the year from the female of the female. In, in my nominations, I'm going to throw in their Io Shirai. Mm-hmm. I just want to clarify, when you say MVP, like in what vein are you talking about? Just someone most that you can count on? Most successful, uh, most impactful. Okay, I'm going to take your back and I'm going to throw in Shayna okay. as one of my nominations, along with uh, Bailey, and I said it earlier, Becky. Yeah, because like I said, she was the most talked about. Now for the other two, Shayna has not only emerged from NXT, not only as like two time champ, but also like she was the driving force of this whole Survivor Series thing with yeah. the female competitors of both Raw and SmackDown. Like 
Yeah, she made Bailey look like the back burner end of the story, but she still was able to not only elevate Becky even further, but she put herself in that area of yeah. like, hey, you're not the only one who can be MVP. Like, I'm just as good, if not almost better than you. Yeah, and then you go to War Games even, and the, I the, gotta the, say the that first female War Games match. Wow. They they told a story for sure. Um, I was going to throw one other person's name, but it's probably not going to have that same effect because I feel like her her push or like her presence almost was like it felt known in, until like maybe mid-year. Rhea Ripley. Yeah. Um, I would say she's an early candidate for next year. Next year. year. Yeah. Yeah. Because she, she walked out of War Games a fucking star. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and went into Survivor <laughs> Series as essentially the main attraction on Team NXT. Yeah. Even though it was kind of foreshadowed by Shayna, but it's like, okay, she's not only leading the team for NXT in the women's survivor match, but she she dominated in that yeah. match. You can't yeah. say she didn't. I mean, we have the tape to prove. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, get your glitches together now. So like, I, God. I, I, I made a full, like a list of names and we've gone over most of them and some of them I don't think have the, that same level, level of impact but I put them on there anyway. I have all four of the, the four horsewomen. Uh, Shayna, Rhea, and Asuka. I think we're all the people on there. Now Asuka, I don't actually consider on this list. I know that she's been uh, the key component to the Kabuki Warriors uh, lately. But, eh, nah. But, uh, and, and then Charlotte, no offense to her, thank God she's not actually a contention for this because, meh. Um, Bailey, Bailey's been fine. I wouldn't put her as MVP of all of the women. Yeah. Uh, Becky, I think, is, has lost a little bit of her heat. Yeah, true. Um, my vote would go to Shayna. Mine would go to Shayna. For sure. So, unanimous. Congratulations to the Queen of Spades, Shayna Bosler. And luckily, everybody walks away without having their limp stomped in. Great work this year, Shayna. Better luck next year, Rhea. We're rooting for you. Number right. nine? Number nine. Two more. What is this? No, that one's mine. Early 2020 MVP. Is this female, male? It could be overall. Both genders. If you want to do it for each. We kind, I, of, we I, kind of started talking about it with Rhea. With Rhea. For yeah. female. Um, why don't we do why don't, On this one, why don't we pick one of each? Okay, yeah. All right, so for females, Rhea, Rhea's a candidate. Rhea's a candidate. For sure. For the guys, it's funny, Dan. You brought this up a while back, actually using the same terminology, MVP. Um, Daniel Bryan. Because that guy, it's proven. The guy could do anything. He yeah. could turn heel in mid-2018, have everybody cheering by mid-2019. He could be in a tag team role. He can be in a singles run. He can be sympathetic. He can be despised. He could be a good heel-like boss. He could control people easily. Or he could get everyone by his side to root for him. Like yeah. there's no room for Daniel Bryan to never show that there's a weakness. Yeah. And the you guy know? is wrestling. Like the guy lives, eats and breathes wrestling. I know that gets thrown around in promos, but like there is there's a few people who actually like you could tell they do it and Daniel Bryan is one of those guys. So I'm gonna nominate him as a twenty twenty MVP. Um, I'll throw I'll throw Bray in tentatively. Yeah. Because we still have to see where this all ends up going. Right. But he could be a, he he could absolutely be a major player in 2020 because he hasn't even really gotten started. He right. plus I'm I am curious what we're gonna see at TLC considering the fact that it sounds like it's Funhouse Bray who's wrestling. That's what I was gonna Miz. say. That's gonna be interesting. It's to see. not the Fiend going up against the Miz. It's no red right. light. I would in which say... case I give this match the green light. <sighs> hey, do you get it? Bad jokes. Um, Bad jokes all this month. We're gone. Do you have a recommendation on this one? I would say for uh, male competitors, Bray's up there along with uh, maybe Ricochet. Just because he's spawning out of the whole superhero thing, but still getting his name out there with AJ, with 
uh, Randy, um, with Rey Mysterio as well. It's it's like you're seeing him, and you're seeing the potential he has to. If I saw a heel turn, I think he gets catapult into that 2020 MVP ranking next year. Yeah. One more guy's name that I want to throw in the hat is Adam Cole. Yeah. Baby. Um, this guy had multiple great matches throughout the year. Personally, I thought at Survivor Series the most interesting match was Pete Dunne versus Adam Cole, personally. Um, you know, all the matches that he had with Gargano, um, just having, like, being the leader of the Undisputed Era. Um, I don't know. The guy could, like, the guy could do anything. Where do you see him if he's on a roster? That's not an XG on one more. I think if you're bringing Adam Cole up, you got to bring all of them up. Where do you put him? Oh, like on on the show? Yeah. Raw. I I would go to SmackDown. I actually would agree to SmackDown just because with Raw, like, yeah, Rodden has a lot to improve. Cluster. That's where I imagine they would go. They'd be better, a better fit on SmackDown. But I, 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 I think that if Vince had the say of Let's bring up the Undisputed Era. We'll put him on Raw. Well, Vince, no, but they're going to the Red Brand. <laughs> um, so our nominations. Well, for female, it was it was Rhea. honestly. I think I think <laughs> Rhea was probably going to be our answer. Okay, so Rhea. <laughs> for the guys, we had Ricochet, Daniel Bryan, Bray, and Bray, and Adam and Cole. Adam. Yeah. How do we want to do this? I I would go. I'll go with Bryan. I was going to say Bryan. Right. Bryan. Cause I yeah, cause I, I I think depending on where we go after the hair ripping incident, um, which that could bring a new dynamic. So yeah, you know, and, and I I think that Brian is knowledgeable enough and successful enough with the fans and the business that um, even if we're only doing this face turn to like, cause I I think it might be bringing out the best of Daniel to put yeah. it up against the fiend. And if that's just to elevate the fiend higher, I think that's a good way to start out an MVP year. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna st- stick with Brian. So congratulations to both Rhea Ripley and Daniel Bryan, early 2020 MVP candidates. And now for our very last one. All right. So. Mm. Let me see. Well, I wrote this one. I don't know if I want to do this one now. You want to pick again? Because I think we've kind of talked about yeah. this already. What is it? It was best position heading into 20. So, like, who's best aligned for 20? Oh, okay, let's let's go with another one. No. I'm just going to go through all of them. Well. I'm He's finding one that's interesting. Apparently none of those. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Uh, Wow, down to the last one. Who's the 10th member? Uh, Yeah, let's do this one. Best 2019 comeback. I think that was mine. Uh, Yes. Okay. Well, give me the other ones. I'm going to read them off as we end the episode. Um, To come back as in they were absent and then just came back? So when I wrote this, I thought, like, who had, like, an actual good comeback. Obviously, Sami Zayn was not. But when you saw someone come back, like you're like, holy shit. And he already took off in a good like direction. Um, well, who are... like Who, who comes in mind? Like, Bray, Finn... Kevin. Mm-hmm. Kevin. Uh, Sasha. Yeah, I think those are four big ones. You guys got any other ones? I can't even think of any. Okay. So, Sasha, Bray, Kevin, and Finn. So, Finn Balor, again, disappears for a minute from Raw. Yeah. He was gone for like a couple months. Yeah. Did he get drafted to SmackDown? Yeah, I think he went to NXT. Yeah. Uh, so he goes missing for a minute, comes back, uh, gets the NXT world buzzing. Because um, honestly, uh, going to USA, I think NXT needed a little bit of star power. Um, and so he starts kind of being a rabble rouser, and you're 
you're intrigued about where this is going to go. What's his impact ultimately going to be? He, now is he going to is he going to end up getting the NXT title back from Adam Cole? Probably not, but not the point. Uh, KO, KO uh, kind of start stop if you think about it. Came yeah. in, took Kofi's position, faded away for a second, then came back and was just kind of there and then recently had this whole AOP thing going. Yeah. Had the feud with Shane, which was anticlimactic. Um, Bray, which we talked about, I think solidly has been like just, you know, booked. Um, what? I'm sorry. What? He said let me in. Um, Sasha, we were off to something and then it kind of drizzled. So now, now what I would say is I would almost I would almost limit this to like a short window around the actual comeback, like okay. Because if we're talking about the comeback, it should be the comeback, not everything ever since, but that chunk of time immediately around it. So like Sasha had a pretty pretty yeah. solid comeback yeah. overall. Bray uh, with the transition into F- Firefly Funhouse and then all of the stuff with the Fiend. Um, has been relatively successful. Um, a lot of people weren't crazy about the way that Hell in a Cell played out. I wasn't crazy about the way Hell in yeah. a Cell played out, but eh. Um, Finn against those two, I don't think so. And Kevin Owens against those two, I don't think so. Right. So I think it boils down to Sasha and Bray. And Bray, yeah. So who do you got, or do we want to, or do we want to call it? Mm. <laughs> no, I would say this time one has to one be one unified. Is one unified. Okay, well, I, I think it's only fair that we do like fact checking and just think about it logistically. I'm just, I'm personally, I'm thinking Sasha because with Bray, it was just, it was promos. It was just the Firefly Funhouse until we got to SummerSlam where we saw the full thing. Yeah. So it took some time to get to that. Whereas opposed to Sasha, like it was promos, she was attacking people, she we saw a much more rageful sight to her, then we got that hell in a semi. So you kinda got a little bit of everything where it's like this is not the fun loving tag team with Bailey Sasha, this is a different Sasha. And my only counterpoint to Sasha is it didn't really culminate in anything. She had the match, but yeah. she didn't win the match. Yeah. Yeah. So do you earn best comeback if you don't and on top? Well, because I know you were saying, like, short term. Yeah, but that was still part of the comeback, was getting getting up against Becky, and then she didn't beat Becky. Right, but, I mean, she gave, like, the match of the night. Yeah. I mean, those two took it to another level, because ev- I think everybody thought, like, oh, the Fiend and Seth would maybe steal the show, but mm-hmm. like you and said, we all saw how that played out. Um, but if we took the matches out, <coughs> like... If we took the Seth Fiend match out, if we take the Sasha Becky match out, narrow it down by that. Honestly, probably Bray. Mm, I was leaning more towards her. Really? We were all captivated with those promos. What 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 is your what's your argument for Sasha? What's yours? Just the fact that like okay, you don't hear about her return. Yeah. With Braze, it's like these little tidbits. Then you get the Firefly Funhouse. Then you see him wrestle at SummerSlam. At first, like, yeah, I was so intrigued. He came back. He had his match. Realistically, for a match, it was with Finn, it was like... It was squash. Yeah. It was a super squash match that could have been done in a minute. I think it was done in two. Yeah. Two, three minutes. With Sasha... Like, you don't hear from her at all unless, like, you're on Twitter 24-7. Yeah. And with her, it's like, it it came out of nowhere that, like, oh, crap, she is back. And then, oh, crap, she did this. Like, you know I'm not an advocate of hers. You know I don't have, like, a good like for her. But (laughs) impact-wise, impact, I would say (laughs) hers is a little bit more, like, stronger because with with Braze, it's like everyone's expecting it. Yeah, we were getting these little hints about it, and the fact that everyone questioned the very first episode of Firefly Funhouse, and then they saw what it was, it's just like, oh, that makes sense. But with Sasha, it's like, holy shit! So you're going with the your your vote goes for the Sasha. the abruptness as opposed to the slow burn. Yeah, 
I will say one thing though, and I think you brought this up with the fiend for a second. It kind of got repetitive. Yeah. Like if you think about it, every time when the fiend came out, Seth would get the mandible claw. That's all we would see. Like yeah. lights would go off, it would come on. Oh, he's right there. Mandible claw lights go off, and the fiend is gone. It it kind of became repetitive. Where it's like, yeah. okay, like he could have not attacked him. He could have just been right there, wearing the fiend mask, like all in his face, and then oh, he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Or it could have been like. Where he left carnage and chaos all around him and did nothing to Seth. Or right. if you wanted to make it more diabolic and dastardly, if you included Becky in this, you could have kidnapped Becky and took her <laughs> to the funhouse. Yeah, that's interesting. But because Seth and Becky have a real big problem with their relationship being on screen, yeah. we never could get any of that. Um, and we never will. Uh, okay, I'll I'll will settle on uh, I'll settle on Sasha then for this too uh, because I I do think that despite uh, the the engagement and the in- intrigue of the character of the fiend and Bray Wyatt I do think there's been some some misfires right. um, where some things that didn't quite land yeah. the way they should have uh, so yeah Sasha Sasha congratulations to the boss Sasha Banks. For ending the year as the most successful, best uh, comeback of 2019. Two times slammy winner. All right. So, and uh, the I, following yeah. topics were not mentioned. Honorable mention. Do we want to like just spit an answer for these real quick? Most intriguing turn. Heel turn? Or face You turn? wrote this. Yeah. Uh, in general. Finn. Was, Finn? Finn's mine. Dakota. Worst name change in 2019. Shorty Ali. G. Uh, Shorty G. King Corbin. That was that. I can handle that. Underappreciated superstar of 2019. Um, you didn't want to pick that, really? No. Damn. I felt like we kind of talked a little bit about about okay. the poor booking. Um, Rusev. Rusev himself. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Most disappointing feud of the year. That leads Ma- into Lana, Lana and Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Congratulations. You four were the worst. You guys didn't even... You didn't even get mentioned until the end. So I guess you did get mentioned, but... Boo. Who? All right. All so right. that's our <laughs> Slammy Awards for uh, 2019. Join us for more Slammy fun next year. We don't have a date for that episode yet, so stay tuned to um, all of the episodes between now and then. We don't even have a date for the next episode. (laughs) Surprise. 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 So thank you. I could have seen that. Go ahead. (laughs) So thank you so much for joining us, guys, and we will see you all next time.